My favorite is the customizable magazine, mainly just because success leaves clues. Well, look at what they do. So you just need 100, maybe 150 true relationships. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge plus execution is power. What What are your favorite things that you have agents doing that, that's driving the biggest results? Welcome back to another episode of the Real Estate Video Blueprint Podcast. Katie Day with my co-host, Tim Macy. What's going on, Timothy? Man, I'm, I'm happy to be here. We got the, uh, the kitchen studio going today, so I just made myself some lunch and I'm ready to uh, ready to do this podcast. Eating fun. a ham and cheese and, and shooting a pot. Yeah, I love it. That is weird that you knew it was a ham and cheese. I don't know how you got that intel, but yes, it was. And it was delicious. <laughs> Not sure if you're kidding or if you're serious, but what I'd like to do is intro our guest to the pod. Luke Akery, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Katie, Tim, thank you for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here. You're making me a little hungry, Tim. I'm on this macro counting diet which I've never counted my macros before. And um, it definitely has revolutionized the way I look at food. Um, because, you know, once you start counting your proteins, carbs, and your fats, you're just like, it's all downhill from here. Yeah, yeah, I have trouble counting in general. So counting <laughs> that type of stuff, maybe a little bit of a, of a challenge. Um, and yeah, I mean, I love, you know, I think a lot of people look at, goals and and they they put these they put these tight barriers around themselves and for me like people said i have to fail forward and man I, like if there's one thing i've figured out how to do it's how to fail on dieting like i am i am the master i'm so good at that like I, if i ever have to apply for a job i'm putting that on my resume it's one of my well, I'm telling you, man i mean i know it's not a health show but the the beauty of counting macros is you can eat whatever you want you just unfortunately have to stop once you hit if it's your macros, if it's your macros, the Rice Krispie yeah. Treat or the... Yeah. Yeah, so it really makes you uh, very aware of, hey, Doritos, they taste good, but mm, they're not worth it. They're not worth it. Yeah. I, and I mean, on a serious note, I will say like being healthy drives so much of the business when you're in an unhealthy place physically, mentally, emotionally. Like it, it's It's hard to run a great business. And I, I do think it's important, I, I, whatever joke you make about it. I agree. I think physiology drives psychology 100%. Katie, thoughts? I would agree. So this podcast is about marketing and branding and video. And so I'm excited to have Luke on because he is with Reminder Media. He is the co-host of the Stay Paid podcast. And so you're like in so many different facets of, you know, marketing and branding. And you talk to so many agents and you interview so many agents. So like, I feel like we have a lot that we can unpack. But for those that don't know you, um, how'd you kind of get into to what you're doing today? Yeah, uh, thanks for that. Um, so yeah, so I run a company, Reminder Media, we got into it. So my uncle started Reminder Media, oh man, it's gotta be almost 20 years ago. Um, now he was in the print space, so he's an amazing uh, guy. And he was doing print, he had this concept of, you know, what if I get real estate agents to send a magazine to their clients? And before that, he had um, done it in the pet space or tried to do it in the pet space where he's trying to get veterinarians to send a healthy pet magazine to their clients to remind them to bring their pets in. So he, trying it in real estate, it started to take off a little bit. He hit the recession in 2008, nine frame, our time frame, and it got a little burnt out. At that same time frame, I was uh, doing a company called Nextmark Design, which was a marketing company with my brother, Dan. We were doing websites. Uh, so my dad's a pastor, so I was selling church websites. That was my main clientele is, is a bunch of pastors because that was my dad's network. First rule in building any company, you got to build your database and your spheres is where it's going to be at. But I uh, was doing that, um, selling local businesses, doing websites, graphic design. Steve was a little bit burnt out doing Reminder Media. He's an incredible person, incredible salesperson, convinced Dan and I, hey, we should join forces. And so we did that about 13 years ago. And God's blessed us. It's been an amazing ride. We've grown from about 30 employees to 340. Um, and we've worked with about 136,000 real estate agents. Um, so our specialty is really marketing, but marketing so broad, it's, it, we focus on the niche of touch point marketing or what you would call relationship marketing. How do you drive referral and repeat business from your database? We all know you got to keep in touch, get known, like, and trusted. What we try to do is step in and go, you know, how often should you send? What should you be sending? And then most importantly, every touch point should actually lead to a conversation. Like that's the real key. And so that's really what I've been doing the past 13 years. It's been a roller coaster, but it's been awesome. So Luke, what's fun about this is you 
kind of jumping into a business that has been around for a while. And so what are the things uh, that were really working when the business started 20 some odd years ago uh, compared to like what's working today? Like what what is the things that are changing? And then what are the things that are staying the same? So I, I think, you know, the, the principles stay the same. Uh, the tactics change, of course, right? So the principle, like one principle that I know is true that maybe could help people listening to this is, look, sales isn't everything. It's the only thing, right? If you don't have sales, you have a hobby. At best, you maybe have a charity. And I think what happens to most people is they focus way too much on building systems and operational things, even if you think about content, right? Because I know a lot of what we do is focused around content. They focus on crafting great, great content but they're not dictating their content based upon the result. And you have to stay focused as an entrepreneur um, and as a business owner on the results of sales, like what actually drives sales. And so when I think about that as the foundational principle, what we try to do is everything we do tries to lead to the result that we want. And then I think, hey, back in the day, we were doing face-to-face -face sales. We no longer really do face-to-face -face sales. It's all over the phone. Uh, now it's all through webinars. Uh, tactically, back in the day, there wasn't social media, or at least it was just coming onto the scene type idea. Now we are, as you guys know, we have our podcast. We're pumping out pieces of content all day long. Um, back in, you know, when we first started the organization, they were trying to grow it. We tried to do more corporate uh, type sales. Now we do way more one to one. Uh, sales because that has actually proven to be better for us. So a lot of those tactics have, have changed. But one thing that hasn't changed is, look, sales isn't everything. It's the only thing. And everybody who doesn't agree with that, I would tell, I would challenge them to think through why they're in business. Get a little controversy, you know what I mean? <laughs> why are you even in business? That is yeah, why, why, why are you even in it? Yep. Exactly. Because well, I think, don't, haven't you found, I don't know if you guys see this with agents, the amount of, and, and I love real estate. Yeah, I convinced my brother to get into real estate six years ago. Um, he's building his team, the Acre Brothers real estate team. We work with a ton of real estate agents. But, but the issue I see all the time is people are so consumed with trying to build what even I would call their brand or their operational side of their business instead of just literally like I spoke at a conference last summer where Brad Lee um, was speaking and Brad Lee got on stage and was teaching them how to do YouTube. And I literally was telling people, I was like, I, I disagree with what he's saying, not because Bradley's wrong. Bradley's a freaking stud, but he's not trying to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. This guy is trying to reach a national audience. This guy is trying to reach the world. You're trying to be the local person. Instead of spending the 30 minutes crafting the vlog that he's trying to do on YouTube, you should actually pick up the phone and talk to somebody, take somebody to a cup of coffee. I promise you the return on investment from you just talking to the people in your sphere today will out um, provide for you or out return on investment for you. All this stuff you're trying to push in to trying to build this national brand like Brad Lee. And that's coming from someone who wants you to do content because that's what I do for a living. But it's just trying to help people realize that you got to be about the result, not about um, just almost like playing business, I say. Yeah, I think it's, you know, we, we get caught up in a lot of things and we can get distracted in relationships and conversations, right? Like how many relationships can you have? How can you grow those relationships? How many of those relationships can turn into conversations? And when it comes to, you know, like you mentioned a YouTube channel and some of this other stuff, if they aren't driving relationships and they aren't driving hand raises where people raise their hand and want to do business with you, um, what, are, what are we doing? I think that is the question. And so I do think it's important for agents to build a brand. I do think it's important for agents to put out content. But if we get confused on why we're putting out the content and why we're we're doing these things, that's where we see people kind of get into trouble where they're putting out content, they're doing the things and they're not getting the results. And then they put in hours and hours worth of work uh, and days of work and, and just not getting any result of it because the focus was, was off. And so I, I, I do agree there sometimes there's there's a lack of focus on the things that that matter and i think that's what we try to do here is is deliver those tactics deliver those strategies that do uh create those conversations and those relationships and so from your perspective on like what you guys do you're mixing digital and print stuff right like you're you're have this good little uh mix of things 
what what are your favorite things that you have agents doing that that's driving the biggest results my my absolute favorite still believe it or not is our customizable magazine uh so just so people understand so we do postcards for people we do customizable magazines we do social media content we do paid advertising for social so running facebook ads instagram ads uh, we do email marketing uh, so across that kind of product suite my favorite is the customizable magazine mainly just because it's driving the most results. And I think it drives the most results for two reasons that I see. One is that it's unique, it's different. And so it stands out. Um, so I think, you know, there's a uh, ability or an opportunity in direct mail right now to really stand out because the mailbox is getting way less mail than it ever did. Um, but that is unique direct mail. So letters would be really good right now. Magazines would be really good right now because it stands out. Um, but the magazine, not only is it unique, so we see it stay in the home. So we track the shelf life to be four to six weeks. So imagine having a billboard in the home for four to six weeks and it's consistent. So people come to expect it. What else do you come to expect that you're sending? And then most importantly, it's not about just real estate. And this is a, a key point I would uh, share with people of what I've learned in marketing is that where a, most businesses go that fall down is they market only transactionally. So just listed, just solds, market reports, and that's all they do. So you've elevated yourself as a as a credible person in your industry, but you have not connected yourself as a person of value or a relationship. And so I always sit, tell people, if you're going to do 26 touch points a year, which is a minimum I would recommend, 60% of those touch points are probably going to be education driven, industry specific, service specific, but you need another 20 to 30% of those touch points to be value driven and value driven. Like one of our most popular pieces of content is a recipe um, card that we put in the magazine. The amount of testimonials we get from those is just crazy. And so I, I share with people, why is that? It's because at the end of the day, most people are not looking to buy or sell right now. 99% of the population, right? We're all vying for that 1%. But if you want the 1% who are looking to buy or sell, if you want to be the one to capture the deal, then you have to actually connect with them when they're living the 99%. And so when you send them 20 to 30% of your touch points that are recipes or that are another popular item we have is we have a local events email newsletter. So we send local events that are happening in your community, branded to the real estate agent. It's one of our most popular emails we send just because it is about promoting something that's a value, it's not really business oriented. And because people see it as value, they open it, they spend time with it, it elevates your brand. Those are the things that I think that you know agents should be doing that not enough are doing right now. And then the most important thing is the magazine gives you a reason to call. So if I sent it to Tim, I would call Tim up and say, hey, Tim, was thinking about you today, man. You popped into my mind because I just got my latest issue of Good to Be Home. It reminded me I'm sending it to you. I don't know if you got it yet or not, man, but Megan and I made the blueberry pancake recipe last weekend. It was phenomenal. Dude, you should try that. How's life been going? So now I have a non-salesy reason to call you in my database. And that alone gives me the ability to then have that conversation that will maybe turn to a referral, maybe not. But if I can make a face-to-face -face or, or some type of physical interaction with you, all of my other marketing gets put on steroids. So if you can have a, and this is true for text, if I text Katie today, then the Facebook ad she sees from me this evening will impact her more because there was an actual human connection that is now elevated because of all the other branding I'm doing. But what most agents do is they do all the uh, automated stuff. They use Reminder Media to do all the automated stuff, but they don't do the physical interaction and I tell people, man, you got to make the quarterly phone calls or you got to send the text message because that elevates every bit of all the other branding that you're doing. Well, you just took my next question from no. me, which is going to be like, well, how do you take all of this stuff and then have it result in referrals? And I think picking up the phone is is huge in that. Do you see agents that are that are crushing with referrals? you know, doing anything else that, that is taking kind of what they're sending out in the mail and stuff like that to, to continue to, to elevate their brand. Yeah. Two ideas I would give that I see a ton. We, so we have our podcast stay paid. Um, so we, I think we're at like 570 episodes. And what's interesting is since, um, coming out of COVID, 
what we have heard time and time again, you guys have seen this going to Tom Ferry's events and the people that you're connected to, that we're connected to, again and again and again, people are saying client events are like the number one way they are driving deals from their sphere and their client list. And the reason why I think that is, is because you have a great piece of impact that you're doing that triggers reciprocity, but it also don't underestimate the touch points leading up to the client event, right? The, the invitation you can send, yeah. right? All that stuff you guys maybe have heard, that is massive. Uh, so my brother's here is doing four client events, which is nothing. I think, what is it? Our friend Shannon Gillette's doing like one a month or something. Like yeah, that. she does one a month. I'm like, it's she's crazy. she's a, a crazy person. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, but uh, super powerful. I have a client, Garrett Maroon. He's out of um, uh, Virginia Beach area. Um, and he did 86 deals from 287 people in his database. And one of the things that he's doing is he does client events, but he also does pop buys. So we have this, um, you know, these pop buys that we give to clients in their interface where they get all these resources of different pop buys they can do. So you think Memorial Day is coming up. It's a perfect time to pop by some of your people's houses. That's another avenue. Take your magazine with you. Give it to them. Um, and, and those are just some of the ways I see people going and generating referrals right now that is a, not unique, but not everybody's doing it. So it is yeah. unique. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely underutilized, and that's the biggest thing for me is the the call, text, email, mailed, uh, mailed invitation are are the the touch points, right? And it's multiple calls, multiple texts, multiple emails before the event, a DM or two, you know, doing all of these things to stay in communication. You know, obviously, I want all of our clients to come to the event, but the communication beforehand, and then obviously, if they come, the communication after is what matters the most. Well, I'm always infatuated with why is it that such a small percentage of agents outperform everybody else and why is there such a big gap in people's businesses and one of the things i, I think you're touching on is how these things compound on each other so my digital social stuff gets more powerful when i call people but the phone call is more powerful because they're following me on social and they're like, oh my God, I've been watching all your stuff. So the phone call is more powerful. And then the phone call is more powerful. I have an event to bring them to. And all these things just compound on each other. And, and that's the thing. If you're only doing one of them, you're not getting nearly the power of, of all the things combined. It's like all the infinity stones. You pull them together and you take over the world. Uh, so <laughs> I, I do. I, I, I'm sorry. It's just my one, my one Marvel reference. I'll, it's I'll, your I'll one... For the day or my, for the my podcast? My one nerd reference for the podcast. I get one per pod if I want okay. it. I got a couple okay. banked up. So um, anyways. If you don't use if you don't use it, you lose it, Tim. So okay. unfortunately, Noted. yeah. Noted. Um, look, what's the – so we talk all, all about content stuff. And and I, I love what you're, you're saying because the in-person stuff, the phone calls, the mail – are some of that hidden magic that I don't think a lot of our agents are implementing. What's your favorite? I want to get you off the magazine a little bit because I do want to talk about that. But what's your favorite physical piece of mail or physical pop by mm -hmm. artifact um, that you love that you think is creative that agents probably aren't doing? So if I wasn't going to say my magazine, no, I'm just kidding. Um, it, you know, that, that agents aren't doing, um, I, I would say probably the thing I see the most that agents aren't doing is pop buys. Like that was a big thing. Brian Buffini, you know, really pushed for many, many years, probably a decade ago. Um, and I don't see people doing it nearly as much. Um, you know, I'll share like Glenda Baker was on our show and she shared this really cool thing that she takes advantage of, her natural, like what she's doing in her day naturally to touch base with clients that she's had in the past. So she'll be showing Tim Macy, a client, a house in, you know, the Kingswood neighborhood, let's say. And she knows I sold Katie Day a house in that neighborhood, you know, whenever, a year ago, two years ago. She'll drive by your house. And if you're not there, she'll take a picture of your garden or of your door or something like that and send it to you. Going was just in the neighborhood, um, was thinking about you, love what you did with the garden or, you know, you know, when, when was the last time we got together or whatever. And I think that's super powerful. So if you can't even hit them with the Popeye, you're still taking a picture of their house. Uh, Garrett Maroon, he literally preps before he goes to the Popeye and he says, hey, I'm going to be in the neighborhood. I don't have a lot of time, but I I'd love to just stop by for just one minute and give you something. And so he'll come by and it's not anything like crazy. Like he'll do something like, 
um, like we have this whole tag thing that's like, have I told you recently uh, how much I appreciate your referrals? And it's a bunch of Reese's, um, like candy cups, like stuff like that. That's really Re almost it, the joke is recently, like right. Reese's. Yeah. yeah the, oh, okay. okay yeah. Like right. Right. By. I was just thinking about like yeah. eating a peanut butter cup. But thank yeah. you for for landing the joke for but me, Tim. It's those corny things, but they make a difference. Um, and he says like Gary Maroon will leave the car running. Uh, to make it so he's not staying, right? Because obviously you don't want to get trapped into a company. If you're thinking like I'm thinking, how do I do this at scale? Oh my gosh, I don't have time to do this during the day. So there's tactics that you can use in order to not have to get trapped into a, a super long conversation, be able to go on to your next appointment, that type of idea. But um, I, I would say those couple things I would I would give to people to do. I love keeping the car running. You know, as as our team grew, we basically would divide up Popeyes when we when we do them to geographic regions. And so, Luke, if you had a specific region, like you may be delivering for me, you may be delivering some for yourself, some for Tim. And so we would just, you know, you would take a picture of the the gift on the doorstep or wherever it is, and then like you'd text that to Tim, and Tim would send that to the client. You know, um, so that helps with the the getting caught up in conversation. But that's it's it's tough, right? Because you want to create co conversation, you want to create these things, but then you know you have those clients where you know you're going to get there, and it's going to be like they're inviting you in for a ham and cheese sandwich, and you know an hour long combo. Yeah. And yeah, and you can't afford to do that. <laughs> so let's talk about the magazine. You gave me you gave me a good answer on that. Like I I, I like that take. So we can sufficient we can magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I love but, it. it let's talk about the effect of magazines how do those work how do you see them working for agents right now um so we see so we use a third party firm called gfk uh they audit you know all the major publications out there like time magazine people magazine all that stuff but what they're essentially trying to figure out is things like brand recognition life and time and home read time demographic and they survey not our clients the agents but the actual recipients of the magazine so they go in and they do their whole studies and stuff and you know, I never really sell on statistics, statistics because, you know, I think at the end of the day, people's your clients are going to be different than Katie's clients, which are going to be different than my clients. And ultimately, you have to try it to see the response and then judge from there based upon the response. But here's what I tell people. We see a 31 percent referral rate. That's people saying because you sent me the magazine, I was prompted to get a referral. Uh, that's over the course of 12 months. So you send 100 people. That's 31 referrals. You're not going to close them all. Most people are closing referrals, you know, probably around 50%. If you Google it, it's going to say 70%, but I think that's a little high. Um, you know, so that is the referral rate. Read time, we see about 44 minutes. Um, and then shelf life is four to six weeks. So all that to just simply state, it is a really unique touch point. So you have, the, when you think about the options of touch points that you can do, you can do postcards. You could do emails, you could do magnets, you could do a gift like a bottle of wine or something like that. All of those are, but there's issues with each of them. The postcards, it's mm, not a shelf, not a lot of shelf life, but cost effective. Um, the bottle of wine, not cost effective, but way better impact because if you sent me a bottle of wine, I would appreciate it, right? Type idea. So there's these issues. So most agents, they fall into this bucket. They do postcards and emails, which are great. They're automated. They're they're cheaper, but they don't create the impact with those. So then some agents try to get really creative and they go to bottles of wine and gift baskets, stuff like that, but you can't do them consistently enough. And we all know, you know, Jason Pantana just put out a post on the rule of seven. Like you got to hit people so many times for it to be your brand to actually stick. So what we found with the magazine was it's kind of in that sweet spot. People don't perceive it as a piece of solicitation. They perceive it more as a gift because it is an architectural digest quality, high gloss cover, sits on the coffee table magazine. But at the same time, it's less than a Hallmark card. So you can literally send it to 50, 60, 100 people. And so it kind of hit that sweet spot. And then the gold with it was all around the idea of it's not about you it's about them travel art food design uh things for their home think better homes and garden there's a healthy living one so the consumer kept it because it wasn't solicitation it was more just oh this is nice and i hate to say it even if they didn't read it it sat on their coffee table on their countertop for literally four to six weeks and who are you who are you going to think of right you're going to think of the the person sitting on your coffee table you're going to think of the 
you know, agent down the road. And we just have found an increased brand awareness and it gives them that ability. And then you translate that to how do you use it in your community? So if I was you and I'm using the magazine, I would immediately, this is what my brother, I had him do the first year in business. He didn't have a sphere. He, he graduated from Liberty University. He didn't grow up there, stayed there, young guy, and he needed to build credibility. So he had his magazine because called it vain, but it makes you look more credible because he has his own magazine. He went to the local landscaper and said, I love what you do. I want to promote you to all my clients. I want to feature you on my magazine. In exchange, they blasted him to their 10,000 person email list. They put him on their road sign. So he used it as a bartering tool almost to build his own little local BNI network. If you're familiar with BNI, he now uses it to go to the financial advisor, the security home company, ADT. He uses it to go to the estate planning attorney, the elder care attorney, and he features these businesses in his magazine as a way to build influence with them. And hes it's kind of the Gary V, give, give, give before you take. So most people go to the insurance agent and go, let's refer each other, Tim. And the insurance agent's like, yeah, definitely, yes. And he's waiting for you to send a referral before he's going to do anything. Yeah. So instead, you go and say, hey, Tim, I love what you do, man. I, I try to bring the very best in front of my clients. I'd love to feature you in my magazine, man. And now you've given before you're taking. And so he really used it as a way to get local and then to build credibility for him in his listing presentations. He really grew his business the first year through open houses. So giving it out at open houses and stuff like that, that's really some of the effects of the the magazine there. Well, Katie, what I like about it is I, I think a lot of our agents are doing these local YouTube channels and they're already essentially putting together other articles about stuff that's going on. And because it's going on YouTube, they get to beta test which topics people are actually interested in. And so if all of our great YouTube agents took their best video every month, and made it a article in their magazine. Like it just, it, it seems like an easy correlation there. And then I think about, you know, all the things that Ken Pozek's doing with the Orlando Reel. I mean, I don't know if I lived there, I would think it'd be pretty cool to get an Orlando Reel magazine in my in my inbox, you know, in my mailbox. So I definitely think there's a, a good connection point there. And I think on all our stuff, um, we understand that. There are a ton of realtors in every market and the ones that win are the ones that stand apart. And it sounds like a decent way to stand apart. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm going over it in my head. <laughs> Katie, what are you thinking? No, oh, I, mean, I think, I think there's a ton of ways. No. <laughs> I think there's a ton of ways to, to tie in, you know, what you're doing in print. And if, if it is, you know, the magazine or, or something similar to what you're doing on social and what you're doing digitally and that's you know a lot of times agents talk about like creating guides you're doing this you're doing that and i'm like anytime if you're doing that like the guide should then also have 10 videos that you're putting if it's the 10 best brunches in san antonio and texas that's then great. also you know you're doing 10 videos that it's like comment guide to get the full guide comment guide for the nine other ones you know is this your favorite kind of thing so well, there's, there's so many ways to tie it back to content and to to have a and I feel like content does well when you start driving people to different platforms effectively. And, and the problem is we've seen people drive people to platforms ineffectively. And so we spend a, a lot of time telling people not to post their YouTube links on Facebook. And we spend a lot of time telling people not what not to do. But when you can do things the right way, like take people from a magazine and drive them to your YouTube video, and there are people that you know are in your local market in a video that you know will pertain to them and... You know, when you can drive people to different platforms effectively, you can grow these platforms with that compounding effect like we talked about in the beginning. So I definitely think there's something for like an unfair advantage. I like people ask me all the time to like get into businesses with them. Like I, I see a lot of uh, uh, pitches and I tell them all the time. I'm like, I'm only interested in getting into a business where I have an unfair advantage where I know that like me partnering with you is more powerful than somebody else partnering with you. So if you can't define like what my unfair advantage is getting into this business, I'm not interested. And for our, you know, not to knock the people that are doing magazines that don't have a YouTube channel, but for our, like Dan Parker, to me, has a unique advantage in the magazine market because of the fact he has a YouTube channel. He can deliver that magazine to people that are following his YouTube videos. Now they're watching his stuff. Now people that get his magazine who aren't following him on YouTube all of a sudden are going to subscribe to him on YouTube and they're getting to know him through his videos, not just his magazine. So 
I look at this like, man, a lot like there are agents doing well with this that don't have a big YouTube channel, that don't have a massive social following. I think agents that do have an unfair advantage on doing this the the magazine thing. I think it could be a an interesting play. Yeah, that's a I mean, great. But it's omni channel is always going to win. Like you got to believe in omnipresent marketing, right? So r- reminder media, I send out tens of thousands of these for myself, right? To my database of prospects, right? But I'm also what? Doing a stay paid podcast, posting on social all day long, millions of emails going out to my email list, right? Like I'm doing all the the channels of marketing because you and I both know it's like I sat on a panel in Phoenix, Arizona one time talk with uh, talking with a bunch of marketers. One guy worked for insurance marketing and he worked with Geico. Geico is trying to hit their consumers 37 times a month. They're trying to hit their consumers 37 times a month to save 15% or more on your car insurance, right? By switching to Geico. That's what they're doing. And so once you understand, hey, the Fortune 50, Fortune 500 companies, like all you have to do, success leaves clues. Look at what they do. It's it's going, look, is the magazine the end all be all? No. Is YouTube the end all be all? No. But this combination effect of going, how do I get frequent enough in front of my audience with a way that is impactful and each one will have its use case. So the magazine, I always say to people, it's like, you think your core clients, what can you send them that makes them feel elevated? And then what can you use in your open house for a new prospect to make the first impression important? And it's like, that's where a magazine might fit into your play. But if you're farming a neighborhood, unless it's a higher end neighborhood, I don't know if I would farm with the magazine. I'd probably farm with postcards, hence why we offer postcards, because we want to make sure we tailor the right uh, avenue of marketing to the right campaign. Uh, But you are so spot on, Tim, on going, you know, it's this combination effect that ultimately creates the winners. And then if you mix that with the agents, and I'm sure you guys do this, that are active. Um, so I'm coaching a guy, Tim, right now, that he's done 41 deals. <laughs> not you. I'm now, uh-huh. Sorry, not Tim Macy. I wish I was coaching you, man. You, you coach me. But he's done 41 deals in 11 months. He just got into the business. Why is he winning? Of course, he, he's posting on social. He, he tries to post twice a day um, at least, but he's posting on social. He's sending out these magazines. He's doing stuff that we all know, okay, you got to be doing. But the truth is, he is pounding the pavement of calling his fear, of going out, and he door knocks is kind of what he does, of running open houses. He's putting in the activity yeah. that that's the, like, the secret because there is no secret. And it's just like, trying to encourage everybody listening to this. It's like, social, do it. You know, If you can afford a magazine for your open houses and listing press, I'll freaking do it. But at the end of the day, if you don't have that check equity, as Tom Ferry says, you only have the sweat equity, then you got that nice telephone or you got your two legs. Yeah. Get out there and talk to people and meet people and you will win in this business if you do it. It's hard. And that's why very few people succeed because that's really hard to do. Well, and I like going back to your your original point with the magazine and us kind of discussing that. Like, I like the idea of the automation of the magazine because, you know, when we talk about, you know, just using the example of like a Dan Parker with YouTube, like Dan is one of the most consistent people that I know with his YouTube, right? And so he's like, there are so many people that it's like they post every week, they post every week, they post every week, and then they miss six months. And I'm actually talking about myself. Um, so I like the idea of having some things in your your toolbox or your toolkit or whatever you want to call it that are a little bit more automated. It's like, okay, hey, I have to select these four things and it goes out every, you know, however many times it goes out kind of thing. In addition to, you know, all the things that you're doing on your own, all the content that you're putting out, all the phone calls that you're making, the events that you're doing. Um, and just again, layering on the different types of marketing because, you know, you never know what uh, what's going to hit the most with, with a potential client or, or a past client. So Luke, magazine, great postcards great Popeyes what are we uh what are we missing what else you got in that in that video <laughs> oh no, I don't know it's a scary thought what's going on in my head I don't know um, you know we don't have enough time to unpack no, that man no, so no, no. here's what I, I tell people from a social standpoint I mean we so the ad we see that's working if you want to try to generate leads on on Facebook and we all know like Facebook high high volume low cost not the best quality. You're going to have to nurture them. We find six to eight months. You have to nurture them. Closing rate's going to be probably three to four percent um, of the leads. You know, you're going to spend eight to ten dollars per lead uh, type idea through social. But the ad we're running that's uh, really successful is a you want an exclusive list of properties, 
um, in a certain price range. So, hey, comment below. Hey, enter in your email address if you want to get um, an exclusive list of all the $250,000 properties in this market. And the reason why it works is because it allows it to run for a long time. So the problem with like listing ads or open house ads is they run for a short period of time. So Facebook's algorithm doesn't have time to really fine tune itself to go and show it to more people who actually convert. So this one you can run for a really long time. It also allows you to qualify the audience by the price range that you put. If you're interested in $500,000 homes, exclusive list of $500,000 homes in this market, so it allows you to qualify by the pricing and some of the copy that you put in there. Um, and then you naturally are speaking to a pain point right now in this market, right? There's low inventory. <laughs> Everybody's looking for properties. So if they feel like you might have some exclusive properties, they will want to see it. So it gets it into your funnel. So we're seeing that ad across zones, uh, probably almost in every zone in the United States, being able to be run and generate a great cost per lead, stay consistently in that eight to you know twelve dollar range, let's say, um, and you know you can generate let's say twenty five to fifty leads a month for a couple hundred bucks. Now you have to work those leads, so we're seeing it take eighteen calls to to really solidify that lead. So if you're not a caller, don't do it. Um, you know what I mean? Um, we're, we're seeing yeah. that. We're seeing six to eight months from a nurture standpoint. So it all depends what you want to do. So like uh, this is one of the avenues I mentioned my brother, right? This is one of his lead pillars is generating leads on Facebook. He's closed 11 so far uh, this year from his Facebook uh, campaigns, but he has an ISA on the team calling, yeah. you know, all day long. So it depends on your model. So that's one uh, suggestion I would give to people. If you're looking for a consistent lead flow, it's awesome because it builds a database. He has probably 20, 25,000 people in his database now from these Facebook ads he's been running the past year and a half that well, he's an email. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say then is like, then you can email market to them. You can retarget them. And so, yeah. you know, while you look at 20,000 people, like, is he going to close 20,000 people? No, he's not. No. Like he, he could have, he could have 15 ISAs calling 24 hours a day, but like you can then tar retarget those people, send emails out, you'll get unsubscribes. But like, as you, you know, uh, reduce that list down, you'll have a lot of hand raisers and people come up as you're doing those other things. It can't just be the one thing. So I love that. Yeah. And then social, I'm um, sorry, Tim, if I was cutting you off there, if you had some. No, keep rolling. Okay, sorry. So, and then social, there's obviously the paid side of social and the organic side. Um, so the organic side, I mean, I am by no means a master by or even good at social, honestly. Like, I, I feel like I miss the generation of selfies. Like, it was the generation after me because I'm 35. Everybody, the, uh, all of them were taking selfies. I was not. But, um, you know, what I've, I've, what I've, I've actually, seen... I've actually taken a couple myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, few, a few. So, what I have seen is that, look, social... The, the saying I remind myself of constantly is social media. Think of the name. Most people, when they think social media, focus on the media part. And they forget about the social part. And if you think about social media, it's like it was made to be social. And the algorithm and the platform will reward you for being social. And I would just encourage people. I call it a five for five. That's just a way for me to basically state, pick five people in your database today. Maybe it's Katie. Maybe it's Tim. Maybe it's Luke. Go to Instagram and DM them. And literally, it can just be thinking about you. Hope you're doing well. I mean, I did that last night to a guy. Like, hey, was thinking about Yasina. I can't believe it's been, you know, this many years since we did the Disrupt Tour together. Hope you're doing well. Really appreciate you bringing us together and just send him that DM, right? And it's like, you do that every single day. Take five minutes, pick five people, do that 30 days. You're going to hit your whole database with a personal message. You get the top of mind awareness of a personal message. You get the effect of the algorithm that Katie is now engaged with me on a DM. So now she's going to see more of my stories and more of my posts because that's how the algorithm works. And so I would just encourage people to get back to being social on social. Um, and so that's nothing new, but it takes discipline. Put it on your calendar. Um, you know, if you don't put it on your calendar, it won't, it won't happen. Well, I, I like that because we, we talk, you know, a lot about how many people are going to call, how many people are going to text. And we have mentioned it before, but there is a lot more power to sending someone a DM on social than there is texting them. And unless you have like a very specific thing you're hitting them up about but if it's just a casual what's up like a casual what's up on social is more comfortable than a text 
It's like, wait a second, why are you texting me? Like, I, I could, you could DM anybody anything they want, but if you text, it's more personal. Like, I don't know, it's a thing. So I love all that. And then also for the algorithm reasons uh, that you mentioned. So I think for agents that are doing a good job with the content they're posting, that's that's the other problem is you can DM people so they'll engage with your stuff. But if the stuff you're posting is crap, then you're not going to get the same results. But if you are spending a lot of time putting out great content that you think is doing well and everything else, um, a lot of people are trying to figure out how to grow their audience. Like, how do I grow my audience when most people can probably just engage the audience they have more to get more results. So you don't need more followers. You probably don't need more subscribers. You probably just need to DM the people that are already friends with you, already following you. Uh, and that's probably where more of your gold is in, instead of trying to get more. And what, what's magical is the more you do that, the more engagement your content gets, the more subscribers, the more followers, the more everything else um, you get anyways. But when you make that the goal, you tend not to get the best results. Yeah. So well said. Oh, well, thank you for that compliment. I don't, I don't get many of those here on my podcast. Our podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's so true. Like, th I mean, think about it. Like, you really don't need that many. If you believe that everybody's, you know, the law of six, you know, six degrees of separation or whatever, uh, it's like you don't really need that many people in your database because all those people know six people and all those people know six people. So you just need 100, maybe 150 true relationships that know you, like you, and trust you, and know to refer you. Um, and if you do that, I mean, you, you've reached thousands because all those people know a multitude of people. All right. Katie, I feel good. This, this is, this is a, a good show. I feel like we got a lot going here. <laughs> we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, if uh, yeah, I, 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 you guys got to use that as the way to like promote it. Like, <laughs> yeah, this is a good show. I, I think, think we, a lot. we do. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it enters in. No. Well, that, it that, maybe, maybe they'll clip that as the intro. Like, that's you know, so like good. this is a really good show. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it yeah. is. Let's go. No. I think, uh, I think people that know us, like that's kind of uh, the vibe of, of me being overly excited about something. And then Katie just, it, it was just no it was just like an awkward way to say like i think we've got a lot of good info like i would yeah. agree there's been a lot of good nuggets that luke has shared with us today but it just the way that you said it was just uh i didn't i didn't enjoy that i didn't enjoy what you said <laughs> Tim, look, not look, luke look you've got <laughs> hopefully you've got a lot of agents that are, are constantly looking for things to do i feel like we gave that to them um maybe gave them a little different perspective which i love uh but if you have one more thing to leave agents with what would it be um, you know, I, I'll reference the sign behind me. I, I, at the years of doing this, the reason why we started our podcast is I just realized, man, you can give people the knowledge. Knowledge is not power. No matter how many people tell you that, knowledge is not power. Knowledge plus execution is power. Um, and, uh, you know, after so many interviews and meeting so many successful people, being blessed to be around them, I just realized that, look, the ones that do are the ones who win. And so I just would encourage people, you know, the difference between mediocre producers and top producers is top producers take action. So take action on something you heard and don't overthink it. Just don't overthink it. Just do it and because there really is no magic formula. And my um, kind of measurement in business, business is I act, I track, and I pivot. I take action, almost think before I, you know, or leap before I think. I track and then I pivot. Because I'm always constantly tweaking. And so uh, I think most people, they just constantly are stuck in tracking or in pivoting yeah. and they just don't act. Yeah. So act, track and pivot. And that, that's, that's, a, that's a great way to uh, bring it home. I do, Katie, it's like we, we see new agents coming in. We're always talking to people and like you're always trying to figure out, man, is this, is this person going to, are they going to make it or are they not? Because we, we know that uh, so, uh, such a large part of the population that gets into real estate doesn't make it. And you know, I used to meet really smart people getting into real estate and we would have great conversations and they would ask me great questions. And, and like, I'd be like, oh, I think this person's going to do well. And I realized, no, it's the person that just, you know, for the Marines, like they just shut up in color. Like you just tell them to do something and they just, they just do it. Right. Yes. And, and, and they may not be like super intelligent. They may not be the most well-spoken. They may not know all the things, but they know how to do what you tell them to do. 
those are the people that I've seen be the most successful because there is just plenty of information out there for you. Plenty. But there's very few people taking action on it. So I, I do. I, I love that point. Katie, do you have anything you would like to wrap us up with? No, I like uh, so, and I have been yapping this whole time. Yeah, no, I I love you like wrap it up and then you're like, what else would you like to add now that I've said everything? <laughs> no, Luke, I, I so appreciate you hopping on today. Um, I love the take action behind you and the message. I think that's the most important thing. And so I appreciate you you sharing and and gracing us with your knowledge today. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. You guys are amazing. I love watching you on social. So thanks for having me. All right, Luke. Everybody, we'll see you on the next one.